I've never really been a fan of builder or clicker games before because they feel quite passive and I'd rather be active in a game and enjoy it and be engaged rather than be passive and just watch a scoreboard rack up points and not feel connected to it. However, I picked up two games recently in the clicker idle genre to just kind of test that theory to make sure it still stands all these years later. And largely it does, but the Nor Papalog, today's game for review, added in some like interesting strategy and build mechanics that kept me much more interested than the average clicker and idle game, and as such I recommend this. In the Norp Apologue, you play as a sentient godlike being, basically, helping out these Norps, tiny little uh, beings that run around, trying to mine a rock for shards. This is all about getting rich quick. And the idea is that you build various different resource buildings and then kind of tweak them and tailor them for optimization so that you can do two things. Firstly, you want to attack the rock so that it's builds out shards everywhere and you need to do that as quickly as possible because the more shards that are spilling out of the rock the richer you're going to get quicker. However these shards then pile up on the pile and get bigger and bigger and bigger but they don't necessarily land in your coffers and so you'll employ runners to then go and collect these shards and run them back to your house so that you can then safeguard and safely own all of these shards. But the rock taketh as well as Githeth. And so as the pile gets higher and higher, it will start to reach towards a glass ceiling and the rock gets angry and starts to suck all of these shards back in again. And so what you're doing is optimising how quickly you can spill out shards and collect them and beat the rock trying to suck all of the wealth back again. Because the key here is that at some point you will reach the ceiling of your world. And when that happens all of your shards compress and you can have this up to 10 times and the idea to win this game is to survive 10 compressions and complete the game and doing this compresses the shards down they're now worth more but the rock gets angrier and starts to suck more in quicker and so each time around you're trying to build out your uh, norps so that they can then do more quicker and keep up with the rate of exponential wealth gathering and sucking, I guess, for want of a better phrase. An apologue is normally a tale with a moral to it, and this is definitely trying to tell you that it doesn't matter how fast and optimised you go and how focused you are on wealth, the world will just continue to suck more back in again, and ne like you'll constantly strive for more, and more is never enough. And this is the clicker idle variant of this. Now whilst you can click away for all your heart's desire, the real meat of this game is in the decision making that you make between runs and also during runs with the buildings that you create. Every building can be tweaked, so whenever you build it, say if you build the um, archery range, you can then choose to stick with normal arrows, fire arrows, ice arrows, and they do different effects to the rocks. But there's also this secondary currency called Zybelium, which generate after every single compression um, that you can then use for special upgrades on building. So again, going back to the archers, you can then change their arrows to rockets, for example. But then you've spent that Zybelium and then you can't upgrade something else. And it depends on how you're going to angle your attack or your collecting to really lean into certain types of builds and designs for what you want your little troops to be able to do because they'll be out there norping's gonna norp but you need to really direct them in the right way so it could be investing in your ammo it could be investing in bombers that then attack weak spots in the rock that then blast out big waves of stuff there's an additional type of like zybelium improved norp that will then go and hover and use mind control to throw shards in the collection pile. But you can also use those on mountaineers um, who will sit and find the tallest peak of your pile and then just stomp on it <laughs> so that it then kind of crushes down your um, pile and keeps it from spilling over potentially in the wrong time or wrong place. 
There's other ones like a missile launcher that will absolutely destroy the rock and send shards going everywhere. There's a shockwave which is very powerful but then destabilizes your pile. So you might be right close to the ceiling and then actually the shockwave then causes more problems than it's worth. But it's great for a wave of collecting of something if you shift everything across to the end. And it's understanding how you want to play out with all of that by spending your zobelium because it's a limited resource. So you really have to make every one count. As you do this, you're leveling up your prestige points. And this is when you reach a certain level of um, collecting optimization. And this generates a prestige point to put into your talent stone. Your talent stone has about ooh, 25, 30 different things that you can unlock. And they're put into different groups, so you can't like unlock some of the really juicy stuff until you've invested in other things earlier on in the game. But they, again, let you build out in certain ways play styles and invest in certain types of norps. And it's going around and trying to work out what one works best for you, because I made some terrible builds <laughs> early on, and I wasn't reaching efficiency, and actually I didn't press D jump during a run at all, and I just restarted again and tried something else, and found that that worked much, much better. Um, it's all about aligning against certain things. Some things are seemingly quite underpowered unless you invest in the talent stone to upgrade specific things about them. So it really, really helps to think globally about what you're trying to do and then synergize all of your upgrades and the talent stone and the Zybelium to make sure that you really focus in on that. And that will get you to compression 10 and completing the game. The reason why I'd probably recommend the Norp Apologue to people is because I felt in control and more active in this game compared to other idle and clicker games. As I said earlier, your builds can really stop you dead in your tracks that you have to restart and try something else in a different tactic. Or if you get it right and really synergize, you can leap and bound forward and complete the game way, way quicker, like hours quicker than um, what you may be currently striving for. So it felt like it put me back in control again and seeing the shards become multicolored and spewing out everywhere and feeling like I'd made visual progress as well as actively choosing why I had and how I'd made that progress then elevated this away from a clicker idle game to something where I was a bit more active and involved. So if you struggle with clicker and idle games and kind of go, oh, it's a bit too hands off, but I'd still like to give it a go. The Norp Apologue fits this interesting straddle where I think if you're looking for a strategy light and a rogue light style game where it's a few choices, but they do matter, then perhaps the Norp Apologue really could scratch an itch for you. Written review will be over on higherplanegames.com. You guys take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.